Hi, um, I'm a tenant over here on Butt Street, and uh, we're having kind of a problem in our bathroom. On what street? Uh, Butt Street. 2338 Butt Street. Oh, Butte Street? Butt Street. Butte. Butt. And we're in apartment number four. Okay. The street is Butte. And you're number four? It definitely says Butt. Yeah, we're number four. B-U-T-T-E. And your name? Butt. My name is Roy. Okay, and what is the problem? Uh, Several of the bidets that we've installed in the bathroom, they're, um, like, the pressure isn't very good in them. Like, the, the one of them works, but then the other four, I mean, the other three are, are like, the pressure's not high enough in them. And, and one of them's leaking kind of around the base. Well, there aren't bidets in the bathroom oh, on Duke Street. We installed them on Butt Street. At what address? 2338, apartment 4. Okay, well, I don't have a Roy who lives at 2338 Duke Street. I stay on the couch. Apartment 4. Butt Street. What town are you looking, talking about? Reading. Okay. I, I, had, I stay on the couch here. I don't have the days in the bathrooms. I know. We installed them. We installed one for each member of the household. Where? In the bathroom. Well, that's all le- illegal installation, then. Well, it's not illegal. It's not a law. But I'm just saying, like, only one of them's really working really good, you know. The other three, the pressure isn't high enough on them. Well, that's because they're not something that, that that's not a building that's... And you... You live in number four? Yeah. And it's not like we're using them all at once. That's not the problem. It's just like three of them aren't. I don't know. What's, maybe we need new, new pipes run to them or something? Okay. I don't have a Roy living in unit four. Right. I, I just stay on the couch. I wouldn't be on the lease. I just signed a thing with the people who live here. Well, you can't do that. Well, I have been. I've been here for three months now. I'm, I'm the one that installed the bidets for them. Well, the problem with that is, is Stephen or Melissa there? Uh, they're both at work right now. Okay. Well, first of all, you can't live there. If you are living there, uh, everyone's going to be asked to move out because it's a break of the contract. And second of all, you should not have it, not have installed anything without permission from the owner. That's your opinion. I am. The, I'm the property manager. I, I think. I mean, it, they're just the days. I think we should have the right. To have I don't care. Even. No, you don't have the right. It's for religious purposes. You can't discriminate against my religion. I can discriminate. You don't live there. All right. Well, you're still discriminating against my religion. We use bidets. No, I'm not discriminating against and your toilet, religion. Toilet paper is bad for the earth. We're just trying to make things better here. But we have one for each member of the family. Cause Why don't you have Stephen call me, okay? Well, he won't be back from work until late tonight, and you guys will be closed by then. But that's... Where is Melissa? She's at work, too. And where does she work? I can't tell you that. I don't even know you. <laughs> well, you have Stephen or Melissa call me, okay? All right. It is Butt Street, Thank by you. the way. It's not it's whatever. Not, it's not. But that's all right. I'm not going to argue the point with it's you. It's Butt Street. You're an idiot. It's Butt Street. <laughs> You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Welcome to the 387th episode of the Snowplow Show. This episode is sponsored by Tobiah, who's a supporter on the Patreon at patreon.com slash phone losers. If you like this show and you want a little bit of extra content, you should go there and support the show. Usually I claim that it makes more shows happen, but I don't know. That hasn't been happening too much lately. I need to stop with the false advertising. A cruel prank or a scam. That's what pet owners in Grand Forks yeah, are saying. it's a scam. Someone is taking advantage of people with lost pets. An investigation uncovers phony phone calls that claim your lost pet could be put down. Valley News Team's Ryan Laughlin has the story. This Facebook post claims that this cat owner was called. On the line, a man claiming her lost cat, Bart, was found by a shelter but was going to be put down. Jeez. But the really strange part was the callback number. It came from here. 
the Circle of Friends Humane Society in Grand Forks. Holy but crap. the executive director here says to be wary of bogus calls. Some of these calls, I know somebody said 5.30 in the morning, they got a phone call, things like that. So, so I don't want to play this whole news story or anything, but this popped up in my, my news feed thing because it mentions prank calls, and I'm sure these are just prank callers. These aren't scammers or anything. But what a horrible thing to do. Someone loses their pet, and you're going to prank them and say, oh, we're going to put it to sleep. Tee-hee. And I've actually gotten a few requests this week uh, from people who uh, want me to prank lost pet people. And I've heard those happen before. Those are never happy calls. I'm sorry, you guys. I just can't prank the owners of lost pets. As much fun as it'd be to tell them that I turned their pet into a cyborg or something, I'm just not going to do it. This article keeps calling it a scam, though. And, like, one of the people interviewed says she doesn't think they asked for money. Like, the news people are trying to put it into her head that they're scammers. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to read the article. But this is my public service announcement for the year. If you're thinking about calling up owners that have lost their pets recently, just leave them alone. Jeez, people. So on Wednesday, me and Sunshine, we went to a comedy club together in Eugene. And before it all started, I decided to check in on Yelp and see if any of you would prank call me, which, you know, that's what usually happens when I check in anywhere on Yelp or on Facebook. Or actually what happened is Sunshine, she checked in on Facebook and then I reposted it and told her, oh my God, don't tell people where we're going to be for the next three hours. You know, just to liven things up a little bit over there. And we didn't hear the phone ringing, so we didn't know anyone was calling. But maybe 30 minutes later, I went over to the bar to uh, refill some drinks And the bartender girl starts telling me about the phone calls she's been getting. She said, we've been getting weird calls tonight. And I'm like, oh, really? What kind of weird calls is that? And she said, he said he was from our corporate office and was trying to tell me to do things and said I needed to go around and find somebody in the bar, somebody named Brad. And I told him I'm not comfortable walking around the bar and asking everyone if they're Brad. So she wouldn't do it. And as she's telling me all this, I have my debit card out. I'm like getting ready to hand it to her and it has my name on it. I'm like, oh shit, she's going to see my name's Brad. So I kept talking, like, a a lot, so she wouldn't look down at my card. She'd keep her eyes up, and she didn't notice, and I scribbled my name on the receipt, like, so it scribbled out the name Brad on it. I don't want any trouble, but that was pretty funny. You guys, uh, almost got me paged, but not quite. You gotta try harder next time. I'm not gambling with my safety this winter. I just put a CB from Radio Shack in my car. At only $89, I saved 60 bucks. Now, wherever I drive in any kind of weather, I feel safe. This switch is my instant shortcut to emergency channel 9. One of 11 front panel features. Sale price realistic CB. I wouldn't drive without it. Now just $89. Only at Radio Shack. A candy company. Today we're going to call up some apartment numbers yet again, and this is all Apocalypse's fault because he sent me that giant apartment list and I'm not done with it yet. And it looks like I have, I don't know, maybe 20 numbers left. It looks like I've called most of them. And these are just the ones that haven't picked up. So hopefully we'll have some better luck with that, with people picking up. Apartments, this is Cammie. Can I help you? Hello, Cammie? Yes. Hey, um, I'm a tenant here. Okay, what can I help you with? Oh, um, well, I, we, we were pulling up the carpet in the hallway and we found a hatch underneath. And we opened the hatch and... I mean, were you guys aware there's a whole, uh, like, a whole cave system down here? Um, what are you tearing up the carpet for? Uh, well, there's a bunch of urine in it. Which apartment? Uh, we're in 101. Which building? 2021. So, you are in 21, um, 2021, 101? Correct, yeah. Are you... What's your name? Uh, my name is Steve Dave. But I, I wouldn't be on the lease. But anyway, the, the question I have, I was just wondering, do you know about all this extra square footage down here? I, I don't know what we have and what we don't have. Oh, okay. Cause, for that. I mean, we, the, it's like a hatchway in the floor. And it's, it's it probably, go- it's probably, yeah, the crawl space. But I mean, it, it's, it's, no, no, it's not the crawl space. Uh, you go down here and it's bigger than the entire complex, like all the buildings combined. Hmm. There's, um, you know, yeah, I don't know about it. Um, I, 
so far it's, it's can have the um, manager she may know about it I don't know yeah so far it goes down at least eight stories we haven't been able to go down any further uh, because the air starts getting really thin we brought a parrot down there and he died so we knew to get out but there's a lot of stuff down here like you guys don't own all this stuff do you I don't know. Let me let you talk like, to Brianna. There's a, a second. computer. And... Yeah, let me let you talk to Brianna just a moment. Okay. This is Brianna. Hey, Brianna. This is uh, Steve Dave. Who? My name is Steve Dave. I'm, I'm in apartment 101, building. Which tw- building? Building 2021. Uh huh. And well, did she tell you the problem? I was just wondering. Uh, you know, we found sort the, of. the room underneath our carpet. There was a hatch. Um, I mean, it wasn't exactly a hatch. We, we just saw the indentation in the concrete and, and ripped up the concrete. Who is it? But my name is Steve Dave. I wouldn't be on the lease, though. Well, then we need to have um, either one of the residents call us then. Okay, well, I, I'm down in the hatch right now, and I've actually gotten a little bit lost. I've gotten a little bit turned around. I was, uh, you know, leading out string behind me, but then I didn't know it ran out of string. Who is this? My name is Steve Dave. So I was wondering, could you come in and maybe lower a radio down so I can kind of make my way back toward the, the opening? No, oh, you betcha. Could you, could you just, like, get a boom box? Oh. Melanie, Hello? Um, this is Brianna. Oh, Brianna, whatever. One of those stripper names. Who is this? I've told you twice now. Oh, well, um, you can have one of the residents call, because I'm not sure exactly what kind of phone call this is, and we're pretty busy to deal with this. What are you, what are you busy doing? Like, what, what's busy in there? It doesn't sound very busy. Just judging by the background, complete silence. Like, what do you consider busy? Okay, bye. I think that answers that question. Good afternoon. Hi, this is Anna. How can I help you? Hi there. Uh, I'm a tenant here at the uh, apartment buildings. Uh, here in Yeah, yeah, yep. I'm in apartment uh, 23. Okay. And, uh, How can I help you? Well, I was pulling up the carpet in the hall, and um, I noticed that the, uh, the 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 floor was caved in a little bit. So I tore up the floor too, and there's an entrance down there to a large cavernous room. Oh, I and, maybe you're confused on the property. Where in? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Road. I'm, I'm a tenant here yes. in apartment twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. Um, could I get your name? Because 23 is uh, occupied. Right. Yeah, I know. It's occupied by me and my roommates. Okay. Uh, well, what's your last name? Uh, it's just Steve Dave. That's not the tenant that I have in C23. I know. I, w- I wouldn't be on the lease. I, I just stay on the okay. couch. No, but it's not even uh, the person that it's uh, rented out to it's a completely last name no so i know I'm, the I'm, under... I'm not related to them so who is uh the person's uh name on the lease uh, you tell me you have the file up okay look i'm um, just trying to tell you uh, i'm inside of the the caves right now that are that are underneath the apartment building and uh, i just wanted to see that um i don't know do you guys know about this like, do you have any rights to the, the ancient technology that I found? Mm, I'm sorry. I could send maintenance over oh, to no. 23 or I could go over. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want you over here. I'm, I'm busy because okay, uh, I'm down in the cave right now. It takes a while to get back up, up top. In the cave? In, in unit C-23? Yes. At Loma Mariposa. Correct, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's down a hatch. I had to um, craft a really large, long ladder, and it takes a good 15 to 20 minutes to climb back up. I'm sorry. And I really 
think you have the wrong property. No, I'm I'm in C23. I gave you the address. Uh, apartments in a. Yeah, that's the one. That's where I'm at. I'm I'm underneath the ground. I'm about four stories underneath the apartment building now in this cave. Four stories? I'm sure. You, do you want me to call the uh, the fire department? Oh no, no, I'm totally fine. I'm just doing some uh, work down here. You're doing some work on the building, or? Yeah, oh no, not on the building because uh, the building is technically not really connected to this entire cave system. It, it's just uh, I, I just it's through a hole that I made in the hallway. You made a hole in the high uh, on in the hallway. Yeah, after I pulled up the carpet. Cause so I, that's it, tenant damage. It's it's what? Would that be tenant damage? Well, not technically, because like, I'm not on the lease. You're not on the lease. Yeah, I'm not on the lease. So who just, is? So who is uh, the unit under? My my roommate. Who's your wrong roommate's name? I just call him Big. Big. I'm sorry, I'm, that, I'm a little bit confused because that person, I already have that unit rented out to somebody else. I, oh, it, you're not listening to me. That's my roommate. No, 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 but the, 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 the person, that name that you gave me doesn't correspond with the person that's living in unit C23. It's a nickname. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it, I mean, it's a, it's another person completely. Well, you're, uh, you're, are, wait a minute. Are you assuming the gender? No, no, no. I'm just saying that it's the names don't correspond. You're saying I need to know who, if this is an emergency. No, there's no emergency. Is, is, quit, quit, quit bringing that up. No emergencies. Everything's no fine. Emergency? No, no. There's no uh-huh. emergency. I'm just, I'm inside the cave. I, everything's fine down here. It's just the that cave? there's, yeah, the cave under. Uh, did you forget everything I told you already? No, not no, not at all. But a cave and C twenty three. I just find it, you know, hard to believe. I mean, if you're in danger, do you want me to call the police or the fire department? No, I keep telling you, there's no emergency. There's no danger. I'm just I'm down here uh, inventorying all of the supplies that are down here, and I wanted to Why? find out. Yeah, there's there's a lot of rooms down here, a lot of floors, and, and just a, a lot. lot of rooms, a lot of. I'm really, I, I, I am confused now. Yeah, no, I'm really confused. There's, it's, it's almost like one of those old shelters, those old underground shelters. Oh wow! And Are you sure it's like you're not in any imminent danger? Oh no, no. In there, or there was actually, other tenants are in danger. There were, no, nobody's in danger. This is far below below the surface, and it's just a single mm-hmm. shaft from the hallway shaft. down a, a makeshift ladder that I made myself. Oh, you made a ladder? And, yes. And there was a there's a guy living down here. I'm sorry, what? Go ahead. A guy living down in the shaft? Why do you keep repeating everything I say? That's weird. Oh, because I'm writing I'm writing everything down. I just I just this has never happened before. Do you are you sure you're you don't need uh, No, no, I, to go over I don't or? need anything. De- Desmond already left. His name was Desmond. Who? Desmond? Yeah, no, he's not the tenant. No, don't go off on that again. He, he was the guy, the guy that lived underneath in the caves. Uh huh. That's his name, Desmond, the guy that lived under the cave. Yeah, Desmond. Uh huh. I don't know his last name. Okay. So, uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, well, you don't have to do anything. I I, I wanted to find out if if you uh, owned any of the rights to the technology or the supplies or anything down here. I mean, I'm, I can actually, you know, call my corporate and ask them if we own the rights to technology. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I can, can you give me your phone number and I can have them call you? Oh, well, don't you have my number on caller ID? I do see a phone number. It says uh, Idaho. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Okay, and uh, your name, you said, uh, is my, Steve. My, Steve Dave. Steve Dave. Yeah, Steve Day. Okay. Okay, and uh, I don't see the complete number. Could you give me your full number that way? Because if I press dial, I'll dial oh, you again. C- can you hold on? I have to type numbers into the computer. Okay. There, there's a computer down here, and if I don't type in the numbers every, uh, I don't know, I forget 90 minutes. It's been a while since I watched it. But just one second. Hold on. Okay.
There, there we go. We're, we're good. Everything's okay. fine. Phew. Excuse me? That was a close one. Oh, that was a close one. Are you okay? Did you do it on time? Yeah, yeah. I, I just in the nick of time. Okay, nick of time. Okay, so can I can I get your phone number? Uh, it's on the caller ID. You said it's the one that said Idaho on it. Okay, but if I if I press it, if I dial, I'm going to dial you back. I just don't want you to be in any danger if I dial you back, <sighs> well, or maybe you won't have a good connection. How would there be danger if you dialed me back? Like I'm not I on a know, rotary maybe, phone. You're not going to have. Spark maybe you gasoline. don't have a good reception if I dial you? No, no, the reception's fine. I've put up some uh, transponders okay. down here. Transponders? Yeah, I've, I've installed them on all the walls. Um, they're, they're known as the Stingray. I ordered them from the military. Don't worry about it. Oh. Okay. Uh, then I will get your phone number uh, off uh, my caller ID, and uh, I will have corporate call you. Okay, can you tell okay? them to just... Tell him to hurry the fuck up, okay? Because I don't have all day. i got to go to the patent office. Okay. And I've got a lot of paperwork to do down here. Okay. In well, the cave. I'll get right to it, okay? All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Goodbye. I don't know what to think of that lady. It sort of sounded like she thought I was full of shit, but I don't know why she would think that. So I'm not having a whole lot of luck getting people to answer today. I'm probably going to edit it all out. But lots of people not picking up, and they're the same people that haven't picked up before, so I'm just deleting the numbers at this point. In the apartment, Yvonne speaking. May I help you? Hey, uh, Yvonne, uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm a tenant here. Okay. What, what's that humming sound? My phone has a problem with the line. Ah, I think I, I might know what that is now that you mention it. Um... Because uh, I, I, I uh, so here, here's the thing. I was pulling up the carpet in our hallway. Give me your apartment number first. Uh, 3311A. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wow, that, that noise, it's, it's scary. It's, it's obnoxious, yes. I know, should buy a filter or something. So or maybe, what happened? Oh, well, I was pulling up the carpet um, cause it had urine on it, like all the carpet in the hallway. Just, it was just tons of urine, soaked in urine. 3311A. Correct, yes. Okay, so, and, how do you understand? Oh, well, I haven't finished yet. Um, we found, I, there was like an indentation in the floor, like, uh, I, I started pulling up at the floorboards and stuff, and uh-huh. there was a, um, kind of a hatchway underneath. And did you know there's a, a whole room underneath the apartment building? Like caves and rooms and stairs and stuff? No, not really. Yeah. There's a lot of caliche down there. There's what? Caliche. What's that mean? There, there's, there's no basements under our apartment. Oh, I know. No, this isn't a basement. It's more like a, a hatchway. I had to make a ladder and kind of kind of climb down into it. It takes about 15 minutes to get to the bottom. But after that, there's a huge cavernous room. And there's uh, separate rooms and, and uh, stairs and stuff. And there's a lot of supplies and stuff down here. I was just wondering if you guys knew anything about that. I have no clue what you're talking about. Because I, I, from what I understand, there is nothing up under that foundation. Well, yeah, I dug through the foundation, though. I dug down into the foundation after I pulled the carpet up. Mm-hmm. And well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll have one of my maintenance men try to come over and see what you're talking about. Yeah, I didn't really damage it, though. It was already kind of caving in a little bit, I, I think, because of the, the large hole in the floor. Okay, I'll have them come over and take a look at it. Well, you don't have to do that. No, I don't need them to come over, because, um, I don't know, my, my ladder is only safe for a certain weight limit, and the maintenance guy is kind of fat. Well, we still need to see what you're talking about. No, no, it's okay. No, I don't want you coming over here because I, I need to inventory all of the uh, equipment that's down here and go through all these boxes. And there's other rooms I haven't even explored yet. It goes about eight stories underneath the ground. Okay. And, um, you know, l- let, me, l- let me file a few patents first. Okay, darling, will you work on that, and then you tell me what's going on, okay? Okay, all right, but yeah, no need to come over. I don't even have pants okay. on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Shit. 
Hello, you've reached apartments. No one is available to take. Okay, so um, I guess that's the end of that list. As I said before, I'm having a hard time getting anyone to pick up, and that was the very last one. But that's okay, because it looks like I have another email here from Apocalypse, and it's yet another apartment building list. And in this one, he says, Hey, Brad, here's my biggest list yet, 70 complexes with unit numbers. I peppered some ideas with certain complexes, including including more trees in front of units. The first part of the list includes units with satellite dishes, and I threw in a few ideas that should work great with them. Hopefully the ideas meet your standards. If they don't, then whatever. Thanks for using the lists. I'll keep sending them as long as you keep calling them. Apocalypse away! That's how he wrote it in the thing. So he's got some ideas here with satellite dishes. I guess this means we're going to have to abandon the whole, you know, underground cave thing. But I think that's okay, because nobody's really buying it anyway. Property. Hi, um, I'm a tenant here, and I just have a question about my satellite okay. about my satellite dish uh-huh and um i've been um i've been sending signal signals up to space I, i'm not really using the, the satellite for tv anymore i've been uh, bouncing microwaves off of the satellite dishes up to a chinese satellite in space um, and okay and well um the it's it there's been kind of the, there's been kind of this weird feedback loop it's going back and forth you know the microwaves between space and this apartment complex and it's getting pretty intense and i'm pretty sure on you know how we're having that um that massive uh oh what's it called the eclipse the total eclipse uh-huh um on that day when the eclipse starts there's going to be um just this massive sonic boom above above the apartment complex but it's going to keep going for the entirety of the of the eclipse do you know what a sonic boom is um which tenant are you it's where like, are you where are you residing it's at it's like a boom but it's sonic oh, you mean which apartment Wait. which which number am uh-huh. i in uh in i'm in uh 2804 the one with the satellite dish hmm and what is your name steve dave what is it steve dave okay um, well, I don't think that I can really help you. Well, I don't need any help. I'm just calling to let you know that on, on the, uh, the day of the, the eclipse, there's going to be a uh, massive sonic boom noises all mm-hmm. around, it, kind of pretty much encompassing the apartment complex. It could shatter some glass, but it probably won't. I don't think it's going to get that strong, but it's definitely going to be, cause there, it's going to be more above the ap- apartment complex in between my satellite dish. And and what did you say your name was again? Steve Dave. Okay. I'm trying to steer right. steer a uh, a Chinese satellite closer to us, so the microwaves will they'll kind of dis- dissipate, so the sonic boom uh-huh. won't happen. I'm doing my best, you know. I'm trying to trying to fix this, but if I'm not able to on August 21st during the the, can you just write this down and put it up there in the office so you know we're not being attacked by aliens on the eclipse day. Yeah, I'm taking it all into consideration. Okay, well, write it down. Tell everyone else, okay? Uh Uh-huh. Will do. Don't act like you don't believe me, okay? I'm not. No, I'm I'm, I'm literally, I am making a note of of it. Okay, you sound like you're just kind of blowing me off about the whole sad, just, just because you don't understand technology. And it's okay, I understand. You're a woman. No, is there a is there a phone number you'd like for me to write down or anything? No, regarding? no, you, you guys don't have to call me or anything. Just let them know. Uh, massive sonic booms for the entirety of the uh, eclipse. They don't okay. last. You know, the eclipse doesn't last that long. It's just a few minutes. But it's, right. it's probably just going to scare the crap out of all the residents here, and you know, for several blocks imagine. around. But okay, if all goes well, nothing will break or shatter or anything. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Goodbye. You too. Ow, Jesus. That hurt. I turned the volume all the way up because I was hoping she'd say something in the background. And then the the damn hang-up tone happened. So most of that was Apocalypse's idea. That was his idea number one on satellite dishes. Except I added the stuff about the uh, eclipse in there. He says to tell them I'm bouncing microwaves off of satellite dishes up to a Chinese satellite and... Blah, blah, blah. 
I'm pretty sure it's scientifically sound, the, the stuff he's saying here. Oh, and I forget where, somewhere in some comments, probably on YouTube or something, a few people have told me that I should work Eclipse stuff into prank calls somehow. I can't remember if they had any specific ideas, but this seems like a good place to do it when I'm using my Dish TV satellite dish to hack into the Chinese government satellites. I should call her back and be like, oh, incidentally, I forgot to tell you about the uh, the hallway. It's pulling up the carpet. Hi, this is Brittany. How may I help you? Hey, Brittany. Uh, I'm a tenant here. And I, I, hi, I have a question, or or, I mean, I guess just more like a warning. Okay. I don't mean that to sound threatening. Um, it's just, uh, I've been, I've been, uh, sending, I've been using my satellite dish on my apartment roof Mm -hmm. to, uh, beam microwaves up to a Chinese satellite out in space. Just a few miles, just a few miles below the, the International Space Station. I've been uh, beaming microwaves to a, a Chinese satellite. Are you joking Twi- me right now? Oh no, no, I'm. No, I wouldn't joke you. I'm a Christian. Um, I, I just like I'm. I'm I've been having. I don't use my satellite for TV anymore. I've been using it to. Uh, I hooked it up to the computer, and I've been sending microwaves out into space. And I'm I'm hitting this. I'm hitting this Chinese satellite. But I'm getting uh, feedback loops. You know how that happens. What unit are you again? Um, one thirty-three. Okay. Um, I actually am not familiar with how that happens. Oh, okay. But um. Well, I, I the, the problem is, I mean, I just need to let you guys know that you know how we're having that um, total solar eclipse on August twenty-first. Okay. Sure. Uh, on on the day that that happens, it's because of the changes in the atmosphere and stuff. Um, it's there's going to be this really loud sonic boom directly above my uh, apartment unit. Do you know what a sonic boom is? Um, it's like a regular one, well, but yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be a repeating sonic boom. It's it's because of the feedback loop I've created with this Chinese satellite. Okay. I was trying to steer it away from the the uh, International Space Station, and my friend Apocalypse he bet me three bitcoins that I couldn't do it. That I couldn't even beam microwaves into space and, you know, what the hell, duh, who can't do that? Okay, um... I just don't want to lose the bet is what I'm saying. So there's nothing I can do, really. There's just going to be a repeating sonic boom for the entirety of the, the solar eclipse on August 21st. Okay, it could. is this that Jake guy, though? That J- one that State pranks Farm? people? Jake, no. I am don't know who Jake is. My name is Steve Dave. Okay. Okay. Okay, no, I seriously thought that you were like, okay, never mind. Oh, what what is he, Sonic a boom. radio guy or? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I thought you were really trying to like pull one over on me. Oh, here, no, because no. Because I'm somewhat new still. <laughs> I okay, see. Okay, but yes. No, um, no, you can ask them about me, Steve, Dave. I, they get lots of, or I mean, I don't know. It just seems like I always have problems here. It's in the computer, I'm sure. Okay, and this is going to be happening on August twenty first. Yeah, on August twenty first, when the uh, when the eclipse goes over, um, there's going to be sonic booms. It could be strong enough to shatter a few windows, or, or just crack a few windows, not shatter. Okay, well, is there any way you can stop that from happening? I could, but as I said before, my friend Apocalypse he bit he bet me three bitcoins that I couldn't send microwaves into space, and this is going to be the one way that I can prove it to him. And bitcoins are worth over like three thousand dollars right now. So if I if I don't do it, I'm out like nine thousand dollars. So I can pay for the windows if I break anyone's windows. Okay. So. Or the glass doors in their microwave, or. Okay, the, so you can. The diodes in their computers. Okay. Well, see, if the windows are going to be breaking, then I, or I hope they're not going to be shattering, because if people no, get hurt... No, no, not shattering. I shouldn't have said shattering. Probably just cracking. Because, I mean, this is it's just a little satellite dish that's on my on top of my apartment. It's, it's not a whole lot of power. Right, okay. So everything okay, should be so fine. Okay, will be the sonic booms, okay, um, August 21st when the click passes over i'm guessing it'll be during the night oh um yeah yeah that's when total solar eclipse usually happen yep 
Okay, then. Well, um, I have all this written down. Um, I will tell our property manager, I guess. I don't think that she's really going to have um, any issues. Yeah. If I if I win this bet, though, which I will, by the way, because, you know, sonic booms, um, I'll buy everyone in the apartment complex one of those uh, new C-band satellite dishes. You remember those really big ones from the 80s? Right. I, I don't think that the people in this apartment complex would really care to have them because there's a $100 uh, fee for anyone who gets a satellite dish. And oh, so I'll, I'll pay it. I'll, I'll It's, you know, satellite dishes on me. <laughs> well, and, and they'll, okay, they'll want it, though, because it gets I, I know how to hook them up for free, uh, free, free services. Oh, well, I don't think we should do that. No, I will. I'm, I'm saying I will. I, I know how to hook them up. I'll hook up everyone. Okay, so um, was there anything else I could do for you today? Uh, nope, that's all. How come it's like all echoey there? It sounds like you're in a cave or something. Oh, I'm sorry, because well, it's getting really close to lock-up time, and I put you on speakerphone so I could do more than oh, one thing at a time. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. Well, I hope you wrote all that down, because it's really important. Just, you know. Well, um, I the... wrote down the main talking points that you had said. Okay. Um, just with the sonic booms from China for the satellite dish? Yeah, yeah. Was I was there trying... anything else specifically that I needed to put? No, not really. Just that I was trying to steer the, the uh, satellite away from the International Space Station. Just, just, to, just to be safe. I didn't want to accidentally crash it into them, you know? Right. Did did I mention the reentry part? Um, I think you did. Okay, all right. Yeah, we're the the satellite. And might... You said your name was Steven. Yes, Steve Dave. Steve Dave. Yes, Dave D A V E. Yeah, Steve Dave. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Okay. All right. Well, I got it. Okay. Uh, I hope you have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Have fun closing up, going home. What you doing tonight? Oh, nothing. Just probably family time, you know. Okay, thanks for being vague. I don't actually care. I was just being polite. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye. I love that they're leaving notes for other people to read, for their bosses or whatever. They're just going to think she's on drugs or something. Like, oh my god, did you see this note she left? talking about Chinese satellites and sonic booms and bitcoins. We're going to have to let her go. She's a liability at this point. Uh, Obviously, the uh, idea for bitcoins, that was Apocalypse's idea. He just had to have me throw his name in there. And I kept wanting to say Apocalypse instead of Eclipse. That's why I kept pausing on that word. Thank you for calling. This is Shannon. May I help you? Hi, uh, this is Steve Dave. I'm a tenant here. Uh Uh-huh. And um, I, I just, um, I needed to let you guys know about something. Okay. Like, like uh, I, I have this uh, satellite dish on, on the roof above my apartment. Uh huh. And I've been using it. I, I unhooked the TV from it. I've, I've got, I've been, uh, I hooked it up to the computer, and I've been sending microwaves into space, like uh, out toward a Chinese satellite. Uh huh. And um, I've gotten kind of a feedback loop. It's going back and forth. And um, it's getting kind of intense. And, I mean, you can't see it now, but um, when the eclipse happens, it's going to make it so microwaves are visible. And it's going to create a sonic boom. A repeating sonic boom. So I'm just letting you know, like, so everyone's not a, not scared when that happens. Like, during the eclipse, there's going to be this uh, just massive thunder thunder sounds all over the complex. It might crack some windows. It's going to be so powerful. So, Thank you. is that going to mess our microwaves up? I mean, is it going to make our microwaves blow up? Oh No, no, I'm not saying anything like that. It could just crack the glass on windows and stuff. Oh, but we don't want that. Well, no, it's okay, because I, I bet my friend that I could send microwaves into space, and on August 21st, he's going to believe me, because I'm going to invite him over for the eclipse are you pulling my leg no no not at all i wouldn't do that 
because here's the thing. I've been using the microwaves to uh, steer the Chinese satellite um, back in... in <laughs> what are you... I'm sorry. It's okay. What, what, what are you laughing about? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I see. It's, it's no problem. It's just that uh, I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to try and launch the Chinese satellite into the courtyard of our apartment complex uh-huh. on on uh, on the August 21st on Eclipse Day. So everyone's going to be looking up at the sky at the eclipse, you know, and then here comes this Chinese satellite, like just aiming straight straight in the middle of the buildings, if my calculations are correct. Ah. Where's it going to land? In the middle, like right in the middle of where everyone parks. So we're going to want to rope off an area. It's okay. I'll take care of it. You guys don't have to do anything. I'll do it myself. Uh, what unit are you in? Um, 20, uh, what is it? 2651. Wait, no, that's not it. No, that wouldn't even make any sense. I'm sorry. I get all my mail at a P.O. box. But I'm in I'm in apartment B. Building thirty one fifteen. Thirty one fifteen? Yep. So the main thing is the, the sonic booms. You know, it's gonna be very loud. Do you know what a sonic boom is? Yes. Yeah, there's there's gonna be like a repeating sonic boom. Every one point four seven seconds, there's gonna be a sonic boom over and over and over. Like mm-hmm. for like the entire time that the eclipse is happening. It's a weird atmospheric thing that happens, mm-hmm. you know, when you're sending my... Well, I'm glad you let us know about it, so now, now I won't be freaked out over it. Yeah, yeah, I just, I didn't yeah. want, I didn't want to scare anyone, you know, because... Okay. I just, I don't want to do that. All right, and, well, I'll let the manager know. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to rope off. You know where the dumpster is? Well, we have several. Uh, well, the one by my place, by my... Uh, I'm going to aim the, the satellite, like, right at the dumpster... And it's going to land in the dumpster, and that'll be just freaking sweet. Because, I yeah. mean, if I make it, if my calculations are right. Why, well, I'm sure they are. Yeah, I don't I'm see... I'm sure you'll make it. I don't see why they wouldn't be. And it's just a Chinese satellite, so I'm pretty sure this is not illegal. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, if it's Chinese, they're, they're going to blow us up anyways. No, no, the Chinese, they're good people. Don't, well, yeah, don't, they're don't, good people. But they wouldn't blow us up. No, that's North Korea that wants to ch- kill us, right? Oh, no, no. They're cool. Oh, okay. All right. You're well, thinking of South um, Korea. Thanks for telling, letting us know, okay? You're welcome. No problem at all. Uh, if there's any changes in, any, in, in, in anything or if, any, all right. if anyone's windows break, um, you know, I, I'm, I have renter's insurance. So I think that'll take, okay. take care of it if every window cool. it should, breaks. It, it should take care of it. Yep. I think so. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs> Apocalypse. I don't think this is working. I think it's the whole reentry thing that gives me away. That was yet another one of his ideas. You're attempting to steer the Chinese satellite for reentry. And he wants me to say it's going to crash into my mom's backyard. But I thought it'd be more dramatic if it crashes into the courtyard of the apartment complex. And he says, or maybe it crashes into North Korea. I wonder how long before the military starts doing that, you know, like dropping dropping things on people from space. Looks like I have two more apartments with satellite dishes on them. This is like a whole section of apartments just for satellite pranks that he sent me. Thanks for calling Capital Place. Hi, uh, I'm a tenant here, mm-hmm. and um, I just needed a, um, I, 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 well, I wanted to find out if, if anyone's complained about their satellite reception here. Nope. Okay, because I've been using my satellite dish to uh, rebroadcast things mm-hmm. back into space. Okay. But so nobody's complaining about uh, reception issues or no. Their their TVs are just playing one thing all day. No. Uh. Uh-uh. I've been broadcasting uh, Biodome, starring Polly Shore, into space mm-hmm. to the Chinese people's televisions. Okay. Because they've they've never seen that over there, and I just thought you know maybe they'd they'd want to see it maybe they want to laugh for once in their lives oh yeah 
But I'm using okay. my satellite dish to do it, and I thought, you know, there might be some interference to the surrounding dishes because I'm using... No, I haven't heard anything. I'm using illegal amplifiers and stuff. They use up a lot of power. Okay. Okay, so as long as there's no complaints, I just wanted to make sure. Nobody has complaints. So That's good I to hear. What? I said nobody has complained about it. Okay. Also, I've been sending uh, microwaves into space because I had the extra bandwidth while I was broadcasting the pirate signals. I mean, the biodome signals. Mm-hmm. And um, I've gotten kind of a feedback loop. And um, you know, you know how the the solar eclipse is happening on August twenty first. Uh huh. There's going to be a bunch of uh, sonic booms right above the building, like while the uh, eclipse is happening. Uh huh. Just like a constant stream of sonic booms, and I just wanted to let you know about that. So you know, you can t- let the residents know so they're not scared. Okay. They might think it's. The apocalypse or something? No. Okay. No, I was actually just trying to do a shout out to apocalypse. Just don't worry about that part. Just forget I said it. Okay. Anything else I can help you with? Well, did you write all that down? Can you repeat it to me? It was a lot. So. It, it's kind of important. Yeah, it's a lot. That's why you need to write it down. Can I get your name? Sure, it's Steve Dave. Okay, and your address, please. Um, well, I'm in. I'm on the. I'm in apartment two, building eighty one sixty one. You in an apartment? I think you probably you called the wrong number. No, I'm, I'm in apartment four zero zero nine. Oh. I'm on. I'm on four zero zero. Yeah. Nine. On court. Okay. Yep, that's it. Okay. Oh, yeah, someone complained about your extension. You were... About what? The extension, I guess, you guys had outside. Oh, the extension cord? Yes. No, that has to stay there. Because that's not just for electricity. That's... I, I, I'm putting it... It's surrounding the building, and it creates a shield for the microwaves. Because I don't want them coming back in my house. Give me just a minute, okay? Okay. There we go. Let's let's put some space sounds in the background. Thank you for holding this. Hold on a second. <laughs> Give me just a minute, sir. Okay, sure. Okay. Go ahead. You you have to take the extension out of there. What? I can't hear you. What are we on speakerphone? You have to talk closer to it. You're, you sound way far away. Speakerphone technology isn't hasn't come far enough yet for you to do the do it like that. Okay. Well, you have to take the extension out of the whatever you put it at. Well, no, I need it there. It's it's like a microwave shield because I've been beaming microwaves into space, and there's a feedback loop, and the microwaves are coming back down onto the apartment complex. What and are you gonna do? You live in, sir. Uh, four zero zero nine. Are you? Is this Lori apartment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, 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 I need for you to remove that extension cord from forty thirteen. If you don't remove it, I will call nine one one. There is no aliens and there is no microwaves. Nothing going on here. I never said anything about aliens. I, I'm well, talking you, about. You're making it sound that way, sir. You need to remove it off that lady's unit. What do you mean? I'm... She just moved in. You said unit. You cannot have any extensions in her unit outside her unit. I, I know, but it, it works as a, an electromagnetic shield. Like, you know how we have a du- dual phase uh, power circuit breaker boxes? No, sir, it, I needed it to ha- not, I, I, I apologize. I apologize, but you cannot have that there. I'm well, sorry. if I take it that down, is- the, the microwaves are going to leak into my house cause, uh, from space. And I can't have that. It'll, it'll turn the paint yellowish. Look, sir. You need to remove that because that, that you're running her electricity bill. Oh, look. You I, guys want to put a. If you guys want to put an extension cord, you're more than welcome to put it in your apartment, but you cannot be using her 
her outlet. Okay, well, look, sir, you need to shut the fuck up. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to that. I other... don't know who the fuck you think you're talking to. Hey, don't... You're not going to be cussing at me. Well, don't curse day. at me. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> please pick up. Please pick up. See if they pick up. Ah. I was hoping they were going to pick the phone back up. Star 3 to me or something. Oh man, that was fun. Aliens. What's she talking about aliens? I never said a single thing about aliens. She just thinks that anything to do with outer space must be something about aliens. So that was the last of the numbers on the satellite list. I've still got a few here that didn't pick up, so I'm going to get to those on the next show. But I think this would be a perfect place to end the show, because the rest of these numbers are, you know, like a couple of time zones away, and probably half of them are going to be closed. So I'm going to save these for the, for the next show, or maybe a couple shows from now. And as usual, this list from Apocalypse is pretty amazing. He's got lots of really good notes. Tells me if they're upstairs or downstairs, next door from each other. There's a few here that have trees in front of their windows that I can accidentally slice in half with my microwave beams. I think that's how microwaves work, isn't it? What up, man? It's Bill Cunningham. Hello. Calling to let you know that I have successfully infiltrated the North Korean missile program using a rat slash malware. And just as a courtesy, I'm just letting you know that I had, uh, copied your IP and used that. So if any looking fat Asian motherfucker shows up to your door, boy, I recommend you either A, shoot them, B, launch the missiles, or C, walk away, buddy. Okay. Thanks for the warning. I feel like one of those people that got the warning from me about the sonic booms. Whoa, Robocop. Hey, I love him, man. I just, uh, returned from Europe. And, um, uh, for some reason, the rebranding of the uh, stat oil stations in Poland to a Circle K. So essentially, uh, Circle K is coming to Poland. So Yay! Things, things are put. Also, they sure next are. Next time that you uh, call an apartment office, um, and a female picks up, tell her that there's a snake uh, that's loose in her pants. A snake that's loose in her pants. Okay. That'll definitely happen on a future Tenants from Hell call. Hey, Brad. It's Tristan. Hey, hey I just wanted to wish you a happy Mommy Makeout Day and No Clothes Family Day. Very special days. Um, yep, my in favorite. The world. Um, also, uh, I was wondering, what's going on with uh, Mrs. Steuben's house? I know that's from that reference. <laughs> Yep. From that uh, one Walmart prank from forever ago, but is there any other backstory to Mrs. Stewart's house? I can tell you this: I couldn't think of a good name, and I think Martha Stewart was in the news a lot at the time, and that's the best I could do was Mrs. Stewman. Or did you just pull that out of thin air? Yep, uh, out of also, thin air. What, <laughs> it was a good I, one. I noticed, Brad. I know what's going on. Pelican Drive. I'm over here on Pelican. Over here on Pelican. Where, where's that from, Brad? I know there's backstory to that one. Nope. Uh, there's not. Listen. Thank you, Dad. Bye-bye. It was a homeowner's directory, and, you know, whenever I say I'm in the neighborhood, I give them a street other than their own. And in that neighborhood, I kept seeing Pelican Drive. And after a while, you know, like I was calling that one forever, that same directory. I called that one for months. I just recently finished it. So that's why I've been using Pelican Drive for, like, most of this year. That was a huge directory. That's the one where, by the end, they all kind of knew, like, they were expecting me. I'd probably been featured in several homeowners' newsletters throughout the year. Yes, uh, yes, we were calling to remind you about picking up your uh, photos. Uh, they are ready. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh, thanks, Walmart. So I don't know what's going on with this, but somebody has been, I guess, placing orders for photos, and they've been giving the PLA voicemail number is their phone number. So I'm getting all these notifications from Walmarts all over the country. And I'm not sure what's going on with it exactly. It says I've ordered photos and they've been paid for. So I'm going to call up the number that just called me here. I'm assuming this is Walmart. Well, shit, it just rings. But there's a bunch of these. So here, let me scroll down the list. I think this is one. Yeah, hello, this is Teresa from the Walmart Photo Center. I have a some questions for Brad Carter. <laughs> if he can please give me a call back here um, um, at Walmart. All right, so let me call this number. Maybe she'll pick up. It's Teresa, right? Thank you for calling the Walmart One Hour Photo. Yes, hello, this is Teresa from the... Yeah, Teresa. Photo, how may I help you? 
Hi, uh, I have an order in there. Um, I think it might be ready. Or you guys called and said you had questions for um, for Brad what Carter. What's the name on it? Uh, my name is Brad Carter. Brad Carter. Yep. All right. Let me take a quick look, real quick, before any notes. Uh, no one said anything to me. Okay. So just give me a moment to take a look for that. Sure. Thanks. This is so suspenseful. I want to know what the photos are. Hello? Hello. Okay, so um, unfortunately I can't find uh, anything with your name on it. Oh, okay. No notes or anything. Um, most I can say is call back tomorrow anywhere between 8 in the morning to I believe 6 o'clock. We should have another associate here who may know uh, about that. Okay. Yeah, sorry. You, you searched for Brad Carter, though? Yeah, there. we don't have anything for Brad Carter here in our store, unfortunately. <sighs> okay, well, thanks for checking. Yeah, sorry. It's okay, I still love you. <laughs> mwah, 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 mwah. Do it back. Do it back. I'm not going to do that back. Is there anything else you need help with? Please. Pretty please. Please. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, was there anything else that you needed help with today? No. No, thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Wow, what a homophobe. Won't even go mwah, mwah at me just because I'm a guy. That's sexist. And now I'm really curious about what this is, so I'm going to call another one right now. Brad, this is Walmart Soda Center calling. We're just calling to see who took your photos. Can you give us a call at 5705? <laughs> who took your photos? Hello, this is Walmart's One Hour Photo Lab. I can help you. Hey, um, I got a message that I needed to call you about some photos of mine. What was the name? Brad Carter. Ah, uh, yes. Those were about the uh, images from the internet that were sent over here a couple days ago, correct? Oh, which kind of images were they? Uh, I believe they were memes, if I can make sense of them. Oh. A uh, couple, couple pictures of Elmo and then an old man of some sort. Are they funny? What do they say? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean... I suppose the intent was funny. However, Walmart is a professional company, so uh, unfortunately, we shredded them immediately. We're Aww. not supposed to sell that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that, that sucks. <laughs> uh, and, and it's wasteful. I mean, that's bad for the earth. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's how it goes. Bad for the economy. Bad for the earth. Just shredded my photos. Wasted all that ink. Nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. Can, can you remember what the meme said, though? Like, what were the quotes? Uh, something about Elmo. It was very inappropriate. Uh, Elmo? Yeah, the one about... Uh, what was that? I believe it was a joke about... Uh, what was it? I think it was uh, a joke about rape or something, uh, about Elmo or something oh like that. Oh, my God. That sounds hilarious. Oh. Can, can you remember the sure. specific joke, though? I, I love I, I don't rape know. jokes. Honestly, I don't remember. Is that the only one you can remember? Like, were there were there any other memes? Uh, just a couple other pictures, I believe. I don't I don't exactly remember them. It was a couple days ago. I only got to glance at them before management uh, decided to destroy them. So. Ah, those dicks. Do you, you want to? You want me to? Hey, if you put me through to your manager, I'll yell at him real good for you. <laughs> I don't think they take that very well. I know that's the point. Because you, you hate you hate your manager I, so. I can't I, transfer you from this phone either. This phone's separate from the store. But, ah, uh, shit, crap. The photo lab's a separate phone, but... It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, Sorry I'm very disappointed about my yeah. photos. But Sorry about that, It's man. okay. It's all right. I'll try, uh, I'll try CVS or something. <laughs> all righty. All right. Have a nice day. Uh, yeah, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. 
<laughs> Holy shit, so they shredded my photos. A, a photo of Elmo making a rape joke or something. That's kind of amazing. Like, like when I when I told him my name, like he just recognized right away. He's like, "Oh, this guy. I've been waiting for this call." Wow, and I have a ton of these. Like, I think I have maybe a hundred of them of these messages. Maybe not a hundred. Maybe fifty. So I think I need to turn that into a show of me calling back photo labs and just trying to get them to describe what they what what was sent to them. Hopefully, it was nothing worse than just memes about rape. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I was watching the video where you, like, went to Walmart and you pretended to be the Walmart employees. And, uh, it wasn't that good because you just did Walmart and people's jobs. But that's not the point. What? Um, you said in the credits, in the description, that the, uh, the music at the beginning was, uh, uh, Hatsumi yeah. by MC Ryder or yeah, something. Yeah, that old song. Um, so it was pretty cashy. I looked it up. I couldn't find it. Yeah, yeah. Everything has to, it has to do with. We're not like, gonna find her music. I don't know some shit like she like is like Islamic or something now. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, you, like if you still have it, it's the obvious song, next step you know from nerdcore. It, can you like put it in the show notes, please? I'll try to remember yeah. that. Bye. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of work. You could just email me rbcp at phonelosers dot org. I'll send it to you in an email. Because I don't have enough emails coming in yet. I need some more emails coming in. I'm not far enough behind yet. Man, it's going to be hard to sort through all these voicemails. Because of all these Walmart messages mixed up with them. Hey Brad, it's Olga. Hey Olga. I have a joke for you. Holy shit. And here's the joke. Okay. Why did the hacker take an hour to map ports? I give up. Because he had 80-80. Get it? It's oh. like a port joke. <laughs> okay, but it's like, I get it. You know, a pun. It makes or fun something. of that it's thing funny. that all those kids have. LOL. Yeah, okay, bye. Thanks, Olga. Hey there, listeners. Way, this ow. Is just go, kid. Jesus Christ. All right, Brad. It's me, Just Go Kid, the official co host of the Snowplow Show, and I'm here with my boy, Nick Fury. Hey, what's up, everyone? How are you doing? This is Nick Fury. Oh, All okay. right, so, anyways, I'm outside of shut Academy the fuck Sports up, you guys. listening to the Snowplow Show. You, tell Nick to you know shut that the fuck rerun up? That, you put on, that you put on, Brad? So, anyways, I kid you not, listeners. About eight people ran out of the store, all shoplifting. They all got into a car, clown car style. You know, clown sec, that's where it's at. So, yep. anyways. Um, I'm at the Kmart right now, and I'm I'm playing it back to you, to everyone, Brad. And so I started chasing them in my car. I'm like, it's time to Batman up in here. And after What's that, happening? they they, they, they there was this car that blocked me and they got away. So I'm real sorry about that. I called the police, and hopefully they catch them. I'm gonna keep all you listeners posted. Brad, keep up the hard work. I love Thanks. all your voicemails and your calls and everything. All right, PLA, go ole 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 ole. <laughs> Thanks for that one. That was weird. I don't know what just happened. Hey, Brad. It's Brad, the producer. I think I have a new co-host, though. So I was listening to the show from July... Uh... Ah, fuck. Three. Don't curse two. at me. Hey, Brad. It's Brad, the producer. So I was listening to episode... <laughs> I can't read. We'll do it live. Fuck. We'll do it live! Happening. Fucking phone. Fuck! Okay, I feel like I've lost control of the voicemails. I don't know what's going hey, on. Hey, Brad, it's infected. Hey there. So, uh, I just got out of the federal jail in Washington, D.C. Um, the attack wasn't successful at all. So, sorry. Bye. Okay, <coughs> bye. Hey, Roy. Um, I was just looking at my calendar, and I noticed that uh, it's getting awfully close to Dean timber Oh, shit. So, I was just curious on when you would like the cards um, distributed all across America on vehicles everywhere. Thanks. Uh, I've been meaning to bring this up for a while. I was kind of thinking maybe I shouldn't be the one to host that this year. Maybe I should pass it along to someone else just for this year because I'm kind of busy lately with some other things. I want there to still be a Ding Timber this year, but I'm not going to be the one to organize it. I've been talking to some other people in the community to see if they want to manage that and maybe just distribute the numbers out to other prank callers. That could be fun, right? I still want the whole Ding Timber thing to happen. I just think it'd be best if we have someone else organizing it and passing it out to all of the other people that want to use the numbers. If anyone has any thoughts on that, leave comments in the show notes or voicemails or whatever, because I don't have enough voicemails here. I need lots more voicemails. 
By the way, I was kind of thinking about making this kind of a longer voicemail segment than usual because I've been falling behind on these for the past few weeks. Hey, Brad. This is Ryan from Kentucky again. Hello. I was listening to the voicemails on episode 383, uh, the Stop Looking at Me episode, and in the voicemails, one of the, I can't remember who it was, but he was talking about there was a business line in the other home for another number. Well, honestly, I don't think that I don't remember this at all. It could have been a business line. Because if it was in the 1970s, I'm sure you know all about this. I mean, like, you know, the neighbors having the same phone number and stuff like that with the party line in that <laughs> era, it possibly could have been that calling weird. from, like, a different house or just using the number. And they're like, oh, it's coming from the house because... They could have had a party line, you know what I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's what we're that's talking my about. Theory. I have calls coming theory from inside either, the house. I was confused. It just sounds like I don't know if it could be a business line if he's calling from the the same number. Uh, I don't see or why a not. Number, but there's a possibility that I'm it sure could rich people did it. A party line. That's my theory. You can take that as you will. All right, okay, I believe bye. everything you just said. I think you're right. It's all settled. Case closed. Hey, Brad. JD calling. Um, hey. Yo, that was awesome. The way you combined the Jaws thing with my theme. I think <laughs> you should always use it that way. That is phenomenal. Perfect. <laughs> thanks. Um, and thanks for playing that call. Um, it's not exactly like the Ballbusters one. I added my own part at the end with the, uh, you can suck my dick. Um, other than that, that's about it, man. So, yeah, fantastic. I should send you more of my shit to edit together. Because you have quite an ear, my friend. Oh, quite shucks. Quite an ear. I just slapped them together real quick. It was probably an accident if it sounded good. Hey, Brad, this is Nick. And I'm mailing you a robot. And it's kind of rusty. And it needs some TLC. And right. I don't understand the technology, but now I figure you could make it work. Anyways, enjoy. As long I as it's... help you out with the uh, voice smells. Give it, like, a little creepy animatronic thing on Bob. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I was going to say, as long as it's not a killer robot, because I don't need any extra stress around here. <laughs> hey, Brad. I just listened to some old shows. I got a great idea. Okay. Next time you do... Um, <clears throat> ah, next time you do Tennis on Hills with the trees or something like that, yep. you should call and say you're from Boyko Law Service and one of the tenants called and are asking and paid to have and wanted you to spray tree killer and just call and say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm from Boyko I'm from more so long time. I'm just calling it from tree killer has been sprayed. I bet they would freak out because some of them would get really protective uh, over the trees. Now I Bye, go, Brad. Now I want to go back to the apartment numbers and call more of those and do that. Hopefully I'll remember to do that in the next show that I do apartments on. Hey, Roy. There's a guy on YouTube called the LA Beast, and in one of his videos he eats 10 cacti. Ouch. You should check it out. Happy birthday, Gross. Jacob Park. Cactus, cactus. Yeah, I've seen people post that in the uh, Facebook group. But I've never watched it because I just think I don't want to. Hey, Roy. I uh, just had a couple of incredibly awesome things to say. And uh, the first one is, uh, first one is, hey, what are you doing right now? Oh, yeah. you know, Wait, well, doing a show. Are you, are you just sitting there listening to voicemails? Is yep. this like part of the show? Pretty much. That page is just done, Captain. How'd you ah, know? Fuck you, Roy. The retarded boy. Song, fuck boy. We're gonna beat me up. <laughs> All right, that was pretty weird. Oh, uh, hey, Brad. Um, I want to give a shout out to Infected, and I uh, was listening to that those tapes he sent, or the recordings he sent in to you of the, his one man phone mob, and um, I want to give you a compliment, Infected. That was actually Aww. pretty cool. I, I really chuckled when. Why don't when you two you get a room? Him or somehow you got a text. Thank you. Hey, Brad. Hey. It's me. Hello. I'm not going to tell you my name, but it's me. Okay. I didn't want it. I, I didn't ask for a, it. I just had a suggestion that I think would really improve things around here at old PLA. Okay. Are you ready? You guys, I'm probably going to be editing all of these really, really long pauses from this voicemail. How about you add some more fucking rings to the goddamn answering machine? It's not like we, you know, 
got to sit there and wait or anything. Hit, hit the pound key. It's not like I got a fucking life. Now I got to wait, what? Almost a full minute so I can leave you a fucking voicemail? Hit the pound button. Jesus Christ, Brad. What are Hashtag. you doing? All right. Have a good day. Bye. Right, you too. Bye. Yeah, I still need to shorten that up, don't I? Hey, Brad. Hello. I don't know if you're going to ever get this on time, because you probably don't ever. Probably or you not. just look at the uh, script that Google, you know, tells you. Maybe that's a lot faster. Um, any, anyhow, uh... <clears throat> 17 seconds yeah, I'm, in. I'm uh, off today. See if you can uh, do a live show today. Uh, this is El okay. Diablo, or, uh, you know, the Patreon El Diablo. Hey, El Diablo. Uh... And probably won't get also, to that back on August I 3rd. I hope none of my my uh, donation is going to Carlito because in the past you're sitting there, I think, getting uh, money for Carlito. I only give him like 80%. Uh, you know, the 2013, That's I what he deserves. Those. I said, oh, I wonder if half or more how much this money that we're donating to you is going to Carlito, you know? Yeah, just all uh, of it. That's and, all. And also, why would it go to Carlito? I, I yeah, why would it? What are you that. talking about? The reason, why would uh, I be sitting Carlito your, money? Uh, y'all share, y'all share servers or something like that? I don't know. No. Uh, yeah, and just okay. Well, oh, and then also, what if, whatever that. happened to Legend? That's another question. What Legends on Legend? Facebook That's, a lot. Uh, He's around on Facebook. He just I don't know. He never leaves voicemails. Why don't you leave voicemails, Legend? What the I hell? Have to, I, must, I must not listen to enough of these yet to find that out but uh, maybe you can give me a spoiler alert well, all right thank you i don't really talk about yeah, legend going, too much bye. bye greg that was greg t the sponsor of the hobo sode that i did earlier today i did a hobo sode it's called cotton balls if you're a patreon supporter you can listen to it on the patreon.com slash phone losers that episode is totally worth the five dollars a month Hey, what's up, man? I was just wondering, how anonymous are you if you use, like, a spoof card uh, from spoofcard.com with your Skype? Oh, oh, somebody and works for a spoof card. Not, like, you're not threatening anybody? Or, how anonymous are you? Like, and, and if you call someone from out of town, like, and they call the police, are you likely to get arrested? Nah. It's fine. Just do it. No, as long as you're not, like, threatening them or, you know, like, calling them repeatedly. Whoa, what was that? Why was there a beep? Uh, anyway, I call through a SIP phone, or like an Asterix VoIP thingy set up in my house. But most people probably don't want to mess with Asterix because it's a big pain in the ass. But a good service, besides spoofcard.com, that's a good option too. But a good service to use would be callcentric.com. It doesn't let you spoof your caller ID exactly, but you can change it to a couple of different phone numbers that they'll give you for free. Or you can change it to your SIP number, which just looks like, you know, a bunch of garbage on their caller ID box, I think, when you call them. It's like a 1777 number. But as long as you're following the rules on phonelosers.org slash rules and not doing things like making threats or impersonating the cops or calling someone repeatedly, just call them once, maybe twice. You're fine. You can just call from your own phone if you want to. Just don't do anything to make them want to call the cops. Hey. Hey, Brad. Whoa. You're all motherfucking awesome. Okay. Thanks. You're awesome. You're motherfucking awesome. Keep it up, Brad. Do whatever you want to do. You're free. Oh, wow. In this world, you're yeah. free to do anything. Thank you. Yay, I'm free. For at least Roy, another what's month. up? It's John Johnson. Oh, hey, hey, all those tenants from hell calls. It'd be funny as shit if when the apartment manager or maintenance guy says, Hey, I'm coming down there right now to take a look. Mm-hmm. You could say, "Hey, I'm just I'm up, I'm about done uh, you know, downloading a porno, so uh, I'll be tied up the rest of the afternoon." That'd be fucking hilarious. Or I could invite him to come on in and watch the porno with me. Anyway, see if he's up so long, fuck boy. Oh, yeah, sorry, that was too quick. I couldn't get to the echo knob in time. Hey, Brad, that's Mike. Hey, Mike. Got a great idea for you. Um. Wondering if you could call marijuana dispensaries, like in California, where all that stuff is legal. Yep. And uh, you could ask them what kind of dose you should give your fucking parakeet or dog or insert animal here, or like your kid's sister, something like that. You know, I think Neon suggested that something similar to this to me, 
because it's still in my show notes. I haven't done it yet. But I think she was telling me to call up dispensaries and ask for, you know, what kind of weed do I get for my pet? Or just call up Petco and ask them if they sell pet weed. I mean, not to take away from your idea here. It's your idea, too. I never did that prank, and I bet you Neon didn't either, so we can't claim it. Um, It's your idea. Yeah, I just thought that would be a funny idea. So, uh, yeah, maybe give that one a try. Neon just lost Uh, her rights to that idea. Sorry, Neon. Hey, it's the beginning of August, and you know what that means. Next month is Ding Temba. (laughs) I feel so bad. You guys, I'm still going to make sure just about every show in Ding Timber is going to be a Ding Timber show. Even if I'm just playing old Ding Timber calls. You know, like last Ding Timber? I never even got those posted anywhere. Those are all just sitting in a directory still waiting to be edited to put up on YouTube. I think I just put up maybe one or two of them. But Ding Timber is going to happen. It's just going to be different than it's been in the previous years. I probably should have mentioned this sooner. Hey, bud. So it would be less of a blow for you all. I'm just hey, listening to your episode. Let me just look it up here. Story is on the other screen. Um, number 384. Um, and it's about um, the lawn care and stuff. And I've noticed over the last few times that you've done the lawn care stuff, um, it, it's like people are expecting you to say you sprayed something that's going to hurt their lawn yeah, now. I was noticing before that. Before you had to really, really convince them, like, oh, yeah, I sprayed lawn care. I, well, I've put it would out there. That, they would say. People know. And now they're just like, what did you spray it with? What's it going to do to my lawn? Like, they're all freaked out, like, like as if everybody has lawn killer now. I don't know if this is, like, some kind of trend or whatever, but yeah. anyways. Well, it's, it's a real thing. Love to hear your thoughts if you think that's weird, too. Anyways, talk to you later. Hope yep. you're having a good day. Bye. Totally weird. And people do have their lawns killed, don't they? Like, they'll just get rid of all the grass and redo the soil and all that stuff and replant. It's not that crazy of a stretch for, you know, someone to get a bunch of lawn killer dumped on their lawn that's going to eat into the trees from the inside out and eat through the basement cinder block walls. Totally plausible. So, Roy, Ruprecht the Munch Boy here. Hey, Ruprecht. Sitting here in your parking lot at uh, 7-Eleven. And, uh... Getting ready to rob them. Pull up. Both of these, uh, boys are just giving me snake eyes. I mean, <laughs> looking at me like I'm getting ready to go rob the store or something. Yeah. Um, don't yeah. think I look that suspicious, but, uh, uh all right. I thought it, you know, just from the sound of your voice. All I really want is Slurpee at 630 in the morning. Is that too much to ask for? But I pull up there. I mean, like, really, seriously, but I'm worried, Roy. I need you to come out here and help me. I'm okay. getting snake eyed. I'll give you a suggestion. Goodbye. You should go in there and get that Slurpee and pay for it. And then accidentally spill it all over the counter. That's your homework assignment for this week. No, I'm kidding. Please don't do that, listeners. Totally a joke. But in all seriousness, if I were you, I would have gone in there and robbed him. I'd be like, it's your fault. You, you treated me like a robber, so I'm just living up to your expectations. You did this. Brad. That's what I no do. name. Thanks for bringing Sensei Doug back from the dead. It was great to see him again. Yeah. Hear him. You know, tell them people about the snake guy. Sensei Doug. Uh, one thing I'm really enjoying lately is when you do your over-the-top, like, obviously fake laugh. <laughs> when people make, like, a stupid joke. Yeah. It really cracks me up. I'm glad you enjoy Jackson. it. I miss Sensei Doug, too. Thank you. Oh, what's this? What was that? Hey, Brad. So I followed all the rules on the website and called somewhere 3,000 miles away and played to hang up the phone with them. And it lasted an hour and 50 minutes. It was a bar, it was late night, and we had a great time. Anyway, uh, that really went well, but they did hang up first an hour and 15 minutes later. You're anyway, have a good one, man. Love what you do. Take care. Thanks. Uh, yep, you're definitely the winner in that whole situation. You made some person waste an hour and 15 minutes not hanging up their phone. Hey, Brad, it's user fan. Um, I just had a, a really stupid idea that's uh, so stupid it might actually be a little bit funny. So some people ask you what your name was again. Well, what's your name again? And um, you're like, Roy. And sometimes you go with Jerbel. Well, what if you take make a soundboard snippet from that one song that goes, Roy, Jerbel. So you can say, what's your name? And Roy, Jerbel. Yep. When they ask me to clarify. Peace. Or when they make fun of my name, just because my last name is Gerbil, I could be like, oh yeah, well, you don't have a cool song like this for your name. Roy! Gerbil! And just play it for him. Yep, I think you're right. I need to put that on the soundboard. ASAP. 
Holy shit, there's a lot of voicemails left still, and it looks like a ton of them are these Walmart things. So I think on the next show, I'm just going to start with the voicemails and play every voicemail in here and call back these Walmarts, find out what kind of things they had to shred. That one guy I got through to, he was awesome. He told me all about it, even though he wouldn't tell me specifically what the rape joke was. Once again, thank you, Tobiah, for sponsoring the show today. I did mention that at the beginning of the show, didn't I? That Tobiah is the sponsor. If you'd like to sponsor a show, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash phone losers. Supporting the show helps me feel obligated to do more than one show per month. I try to do three per week, but I usually do at least two of them. I'm going to end today's show with a request from Liz. She sent me an email and says, Hey Brad, I'm listening to a snowplow show with my headphones on full blast. And on a related note, I'd like to request a Snowplow Show ending song as a shout-out to my lovely co-workers. It's called STFU by Filthy Frank. I think I've played this one before, haven't I? I know I've played something by Filthy Frank. But here's your song, Liz. Shut the fuck up. You're a fucking cunt.